give the Lord glory. So Lord, we join this morning with the saints all over this earth, with those that worship you openly, with those that have to hide to worship you. You are holy, holy, holy. We glorify you, Lord. Be high and lifted up in this house, Lord. All over this earth, Lord. Be high and lifted up. Let your angels minister to your children today. Lord, to those in need, to those who call out to you, to those who don't even know how to call out to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. down. Make sure you tell somebody they're awesome. God said so. She likes the front. That's a good place to be. Yeah. Microphone. Future worshiper right there. Maybe she'll be a pastor, preacher, prime minister. God bless her. Yeah. Really, Lord. Thank you for our kids. Really. Thank you, Lord. So as far as our kids class, you can be, see you guys, you can be released to your kids class right now. Wow just feels easier to breathe in here. Turn to your neighbor and say, you made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see your faces. It's like, is that kind of weak for some, wasn't it? But bless the Lord, we made it. 
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We just have a few announcements, but there's just, um, I know a lot of you know this scripture, but sometimes I just need to read it. It's um, 1 John 4, 18. If I can find 1 John. Does anyone ever feel tormented in your mind? Yeah? Well, when you do, it's like it's hard. Even during a worship service, it can be challenging to even try and get engaged, right? It, it can be hard. And torment is just that. It's meant to give you grief. It's meant to give you trouble. It's meant to, wow, look at that. Okay, well, let's read it together then. Okay, read with me. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So in that passage, I'm not speaking this morning, but I am kind of speaking. If you feel like you're tormented in your mind, number one, meaning like you can't keep a straight thought or it's just, it's like such a constant battle. I just want you to stand up. I want you to be really brave. If another one that you feel like you uh, cannot receive love, like when God's love comes near you, you like say, oh no, no, that's for somebody else. Oh no, 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 that's for someone else. So if that's you, I want you to just stand up because God is really wanting to do something in your life right now because we just read the word and there is perfect love casts out fear. So if you find it's in your thoughts, I want you to put your hand on your head. If you find that you have trouble receiving the love of God, I want you to put your hand on your heart. And so, Father, these are the areas that we are anointed right now. Lord, we speak perfect love. That's the love that comes over you right now over every tormenting thought in the name of Jesus. We command you. Oh, just wait. Say this with me. Say, Father, forgive me for listening to the devil and believing him. Devil, torment, you're not my friend. You're a liar. So in the name of Jesus, I let go of you and I command you come off of my thoughts right now in the name of Jesus. Now I want you to say, so, hold on, stay there. There's still a little bit more. So there's a, a forcefulness in the spirit of God. And so we're Canadian and there's a lot of things. We don't like to raise our voices and we need stuff. But there is a boldness. If you have a, a dog that keeps jumping up on your bed and you're training that dog to get off of the bed, you don't say, no, no, puppy. You have a bold go. And so I'm, I'm setting this up because I really want you to be able to tell this tormenting thing to go in Jesus' name. And as it goes love is going to come. Okay? Are we ready? So we're going to do it on three. And I want you to give a real series. You don't want that dog in the bed anymore. It's not welcome. That tormenting thought, it's meant to hurt you and block you from God. Ultimately, it's, its plan is to kill you. So if you feel this strongly as I feel right now, I want you to be get real serious. Are you serious? Here we go. On the count of three. One, two, three. Go! Whoa. I didn't really believe you. And if I didn't believe you, that means he didn't believe you. So, Lord, where there's places where we have unlove in our heart and we are so full and we can't receive from you, we repent for listening to the assignment of the enemy right now. And we just speak to every demonic force that is working against us right now in the name of Jesus. We may not know your name, but Jesus does. And we know his name, and under his name, we are set free. So we're going to muster all that we have. And we just call attention our spirits and every demonic influence that is hurting the people of God. We address you right now in the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. And we're going to command you to go as a group. So on the count of three, we're going to say go. And when we do this, it's going. Believe it. It's going to happen. So one, two, three. Go! Woo! Holy smoke. That's what needs to fill this room. Now, hold on. Don't sit. Don't sit. Now say, Jesus, come. Fill me up in all the places that dirty rat was. I'm clean. I can receive perfect love. 
Amen. Whew, hallelujah. So that's done. So now you'll be ready for the service, and that's not even the announcement today. So <laughs> that's not even offering. <laughs> hallelujah. Torment just got the wind kicked out of it. It's out. In Jesus' name, that's so awesome. Uh, the only announcement that we're having is ladies' conference. I keep forgetting to announce this because I have, I have sent text messages to you individually. Um, but April 28 to 30 in Victory Grand Prairie is the women's conference. No, there's no slide, Ray. I've seen that look. Um, so this conference is going to be a little bit different in the way that we're used to women's conferences, that we'd be around tables, we would have all this fun. This one, no tables. It's going to be waiting on the Lord. Which is, so if you're organizing it, terrifying. If you're attending it, you're like, I don't know if I want to invest in that. I'm going to tell you right now by faith, what we just did on this level, I believe is what's going to be there. I believe that there's going to be levels of freedom that we have not yet experienced. And there's just things as women that we need help with. And this is a women's conference. Sorry, guys, you can't come. But what you can do is you can bless your wife to go. You can invest in her. It's a $35 registration fee. I mean, you've got to get hotels and that sort of thing. But I would ask that you would consider it if you haven't already. And it's uh, April 20th, which is this week, is the cutoff for registration. Yeah. So I'm going and my daughter is going and there's a group of us going. Um, we can find someone and carpool and do whatever you have to do. And you know what? It's a fun road trip. You know, Jesus, some would say, I don't have to go anywhere. I can receive rape from God. Yeah, you totally can. You're not going to miss out on one big event. But God sees our heart where we invest. Okay, so that leads us, look at this smooth transition. That leads us right into our tithing and offering. Investing in the kingdom of God. Amen? You know that that's a good investment? Yeah, it's more than a tip. I'm sorry, I keep, I went for a walk yesterday and I've got like a muscle cramp. I keep pulling it here. I'm sorry, that's why I keep rubbing. Oh, springs here, I have to exercise. It's awful and wonderful at the same time, right? <laughs> so I keep thinking this muscle, I'm sure there's a muscle in there because she's pinching. So back to offering. We have uh, uh, e-transfers. <laughs> Uh, which has been that the easiest thing for you if you uh, if it's your first time giving through e-transfer it's treasure at newlife-victory.org we're blessed in this house and it's a blessing to give it really is a way Darren and I have talked about it many times that we are <laughs> we're going to tithe forever until Jesus come and get, comes and gets us and this isn't just a this church thing this is a body of Christ thing so even if you're visiting in this church or online, tithe to your local church, the place that your storehouse, the place where you receive from God. I would encourage you to get rooted in a place. Don't just bounce. There's more for you. And uh, God is a really good return, isn't he? Amen. Yeah. Say this with me. Say, keeping it real. That's what you just experienced. Yeah. In the same way, Lord, that people have renounced fear, I speak that over our finances as well, and especially over the future. Lord, where people uh, are just afraid, God, I thank you this morning that perfect love casts out all fear. And I believe that even right now, not only have you delivered us, but you're bringing us into plenty in Jesus' name. So thank you, Lord, that as you've uh, relieved us from fear, you've also given us courage. So thank you for a courageous people who prosper in your name. In Jesus' name, amen. That was beautiful, beautiful worship. And there was such a beautiful opportunity. Lord, seal that up that nothing will be stolen. God, I, I pray that this is just like a beginning of stepping into more and more and deeper and deeper. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's, uh, 
Let's give praise and worship a hand. Awesome job. So, Lord, you got some stuff that you want people to know today. And, and they need to know. So, God, help me to get past me so that people will hear. I, I pray you would not only anoint me, but would you anoint their ears I pray that your people now, Lord, not later, but right now, will have ears to hear. So open up the eyes of our understanding, even today, that we would know what is the hope of your calling, uh, the length, the width, the height, all of these things of not just your love, but your perfect peace towards us and your plan for us. In Jesus' name, you are a covenant God. And Lord... We say it like we know it, and I think some of us do know it, but none of us know it to the extent that you want to show. You are a covenant God. And you, do, you don't mess around. When you give your covenant, you don't take it back. So, God, I pray for revelation this morning for myself, for your people, that we would begin to grasp this amazing covenant that you have with us by the way, this covenant goes past your life. This covenant goes past your death. It is a promise that none of those things will actually keep you from Jesus. Even death will not keep you from Jesus. When he gives a covenant, it is for eternity. It isn't just for our time on earth and then dead and then you're in heaven. Past that. What an amazing covenant. God, thank you so much for this in Jesus' name. Also, thank you for, do you know uh, in, in old time, Israel time, before they had rings on, they would actually cut your finger. So your finger would be cut all the way around. That, that's how you were shown that you were married. So, Lord, thank you for rings. <laughs> Woo. In Jesus' name. I want to make us aware today of like a, a global opportunity, and this one is actually really cool and can change a lot. I mean, the enemies always want to make you aware through news and everything of his global, what he's doing globally, doing this, doing that, and fear this and fear that. Oh, look out, the sky's falling. There's a tremendous opportunity that has just opened up that we're going to take part of as well um, as a church. The Lord is always drawing his people to him. I mean the Jew, the Gentile. In fact, the Bible says all of creation, all. He's going to reconcile it all back to himself. And we get to be a part of this. Say Israel. It's actually like, it's actually like three words. Is, re, el, which is prince with God. And when we were on the bus in Israel, they corrected us because the, the, they said, say Israel. So we said, Israel. And they, they went, it isn't Israel. And they corrected us. They went, it's Israel, prince with God. And we went, okay, okay, it's prince with God. Don't hurt us. National House, sorry, International House of Prayer in Kansas They've been doing 24-hour prayer forever. Yeah. 24-hour praise and worship going on all the time for 24 years. You better get that. That's important. <laughs> yeah. Aren't those the moments? And everything goes slow motion and your heart goes... And you're thinking, everyone's looking at me. Except it's slow-mo and you're going, where's my phone? Like this. And then finally when you get it and you've already moved around and everyone's, everyone's still at that time. And they're waiting for the one who moves. And then everyone looks, right? Thank you, Lisa, for doing what happens to some of us a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say this. Say thank you, Lisa. That was entertaining. Ah. Moments of truth, hey? 
House of Prayer, 20, okay, yeah, right. Here's the goal. Now write this down um, from May 7th to May 28th. 21 days. Here's what they want to do. One hour for one hour a day for 21 days of praying for Israel. Just just one hour. They're gonna they're gonna do 24 hour, but this is what they're asking. They're asking for churches, for people just to pray for one hour for Israel for 21 days. And they are going to have, get this, and they already do, one million people praying for Israel for one hour, which has never happened ever before. And this is what they've said as well, and I fully agree with them. They would said, do you know that the whole globe can be changed just because of 28 days, people praying for one hour a day for Israel? Israel is like the epicenter of the world. Whatever happens in Israel affects all of the world. When we started talking today about covenant, God is a covenant God. His covenant is with Israel, still is, always was, and will be, and for you as well. And before this uh, 21 days is over, they expect to have, get this, listen to this, 100 million people interceding for Israel. I feel the presence of God on that just talking about that. I, I, get, I get like a handful of people pray for me, and I can feel a difference in my physical body. I can feel a difference in my courage. I can feel it. Can you imagine? I can't even imagine one million, not let alone a hundred million people interceding for Israel. Can you imagine what would happen on this earth? 21 days, and they're asking for one hour that you'd pray and fast for one hour for 21 days. What would happen on this earth? Not to mention that we're commanded to pray even in Psalm 122. Pray for the peace of Israel and Jerusalem. The prosperity within her walls. Can you imagine what would happen? Whoa. Say whoa. Yeah, come say it. No, Isaiah 62. Bring your Bible. So it's called Isaiah 62 fast, um, verse 6 and 7. So I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord do not keep silent. And give him, him, capital H, give God no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Actually, Ray, um, I want you to do this. Put up Romans 11, please. This amazing covenant that God has with Israel as well. He calls it a mystery. And in Romans 11, he speaks it like this. I want you to understand this mystery. Say mystery. Dear brothers and sisters, so that you don't feel proud about yourselves. Some of the people of Israel have hard hearts, but this will only last until the full number of Gentiles have... That's us. And if you've ever been to Israel, it's the most amazing thing. They love the Father. They love Jehovah like with a physical passion that I'm in awe of. I'm like, wow. Like they, they, he is their life. Their life, they, everything is Jehovah God. It's quite amazing. But they're blinded in this way that if you talk to them about Jesus, their Jesus, their Jewish Jesus, every, they don't believe that Jesus is the, the Messiah, the one who's come to save them. It is the most amazing thing. And I think to myself, why, Lord, why? Well, here's why. I want you to understand this mystery, dear Christians. So that you will not feel proud about yourselves that you've got this exclusivity on Jesus. 
Some of the people of Israel have hard hearts, but this will only last until the full number of us have come to Jesus. See, there is this number that God has, and it's on his heart, of believers, of people who come to Jesus. They accept him. And once this number is fulfilled, boom, then you see this earth change very, very quickly. When the full number of Christians come to Jesus, then all of a sudden things start to happen on a global scale. The, the Jews start to receive and see Messiah. You see war. You see all of the things multiply immediately. There is a number that God said this number happens and then boom, all of a sudden action happens. Oh, okay. And so all Israel will be saved as the scriptures say and you can hasten that day, actually, the Bible also says, just by praying. Um, put up Ephesians as well, please, Ephesians 2. God, thank you for simple understanding today. Thank you that it gets into the hearts and it doesn't leave. Thank you that we see that Israel, that the Jews, Lord, they're our brother. They're, they're in your heart from creation. You designed this to happen, even though we see right now that the Jews haven't fully received or accepted you. Ephesians 2 says, In those days, you were living apart from Jesus. That was us. You were excluded from the citizenship among the people of Israel, and you didn't know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But now, say now, now, you've been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you've been brought near to him through the blood of Jesus and his beautiful gospel. Thank you, Lord. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people uh, when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. This is his plan. It is the most amazing thing to go to Israel and to see the people who love Jehovah with everything that they've got, but they have not accepted Jesus yet. And here you are walking fully alive in Christ with the Holy Ghost on the inside, knowing this, I think I'm the answer for what they need. I think that Christ in me is the answer for what they need. But if I just go and beak off and tell them, it doesn't go very well at all. But when I pray, heaven moves. And when two of us pray, heaven moves big time. Can you imagine one million? Can you imagine one million people praying for Israel for 21 days? Let alone a hundred million who intercede. Woo! They have never done this before. No, it's true. Thank you, Lord. If you've, I think I got pictures there as well, didn't I? Can you put the first one up? That's, yeah, okay, good. When you go to Israel, it's not a visit. It's not a vacation. It's not time away. It's an experience. I don't, I don't have many other words for it. The first time we went, uh, I called Angie and she said, what's it like? What's it like? And I, I told her, all I can feel is covenant. There's something so much older than me. And I, it's like I'm walking in it. I'm walking in this covenant. I would, I would go on their days of Shabbat, which is quite an experience because they shut, like their, their section of the earth is shut down. Buses, Everything is shut down. They do no work on this day. In fact, the elevators, they're on automatic. And so they, they stop every second floor. So you almost have to look and go, okay, I get on. No, if you want to be on a floor. You go and you watch them go into, I've, I watched on, uh, I'd walk down the street on the Shabbat and I remember looking up on the balconies and they had like, they were scholars or they were in school. They were like rabbis and, Come stand with me. Yeah. They were orthodox. They had their stuff. They were standing like this on the balcony, not looking at anyone. There's about four of them. 
and they're all like this with their arms around each other. They were doing their dance, and they were singing to the Lord. They're singing to God as I'm walking down the street looking at them, and I realize this you know, I think that as a Christian, we've got everything cornered and marketed. Like we're, we're it. We are the pinnacle, man, on this earth. And I realize there's something that I don't have and that we don't have here in Western. They do covenant family unlike anyone on earth. It is something to behold. When you're walking down the street and you're looking and you see that on this side and you see it on that side and you also see bullet holes in different places where they they just deal with stuff. Amazing. The other house that we stayed at with Angie and the kids, we would be down in their bomb shelter. That's where we were doing, that's where we were doing, we were praying together, singing together down there. Real life for them. Would, you'd talk to them, just the most amazing people on earth. You'd talk to them and they would say, we see missiles go over all the time. But at, instead of them hitting, they get diverted, not by any person. They see the missile coming over, and it turns and goes that way. And when it's coming, and it's supposed to hit the city or Jerusalem, and it goes flying off somewhere else. Say covenant. covenant. See, the Lord thinks completely differently about covenant uh, sometimes than we do. And when he says, Psalm 91, I'm covering you and protecting you, you're my people, he means it and protects them from death. It's amazing. I would go into, um, into the hotels in the bottom. Every Friday, the hotels are packed. They're packed out with family. And I would go, and they have tables, like, like our tables that we set up for food. They'd have long tables. And I'd walk in, and I'd peek in, and they had from the youngest to the oldest. So from the little baby right to the grandfather. And I'm talking like family, like a spread of food you have not seen. And I'm poking in, and I'm looking at this stuff. And it's all got to be kosher food. It's got to be the right food. Regardless of that, you know what they're doing? All of this family together, they're singing to God. From the little to the oldest. I realized when I was there thinking I got the exclusivity on Jesus because I'm Pentecostal and all of that. You see family in Israel and you see I, I'm missing something. There is so much I can learn from these people. Oh, the stories we have. sat at a, at a table with the head archaeologist in all of Israel. And the reason we got him is because our tour guide is the editor for the New King James Bible, Nelson. the Nelson Bible, Wayne House. Yep. So he's quite a name, I guess. And so he's got a lot of pull. And so we were sitting with the head archaeologist of all of Israel uh, for supper. And they're, they're different. They're pretty confident. So we're asking, he's like, ask him any questions. I've got this guy for like 15 minutes. So they'd ask him questions, and they went right to, okay, for Messiah to come, things have to happen. The temple's going to have to be rebuilt, and Israel has to have the Ark of the Covenant. Like, the Ark of the Covenant. Do you have the Ark of the Covenant? And he wouldn't, he wouldn't even look at us. He wouldn't even acknowledge. He'd look over here and go like this. We have all that we need. Really? Whoa. Just an awe goes through the people. Thank you, honey. For Jesus to come back, some things have to be in place. And this head archaeologist of all of Israel goes like this. We have everything that we need. Whoa. Picture in Israel. This is uh, on Mount Carmel. That's Elijah putting to death the prophets of Baal. You can stand on the places that you read and preach about. You can stand on Mount Carmel right where he did battle with all the prophets of Baal. Give me another picture. This is just uh, water aqueducts, how they built and they they transported water all over Israel. It was just absolutely phenomenal. Can I have another one? 
Where the Bible says this, it would be like they talk about kings or important people, and they would say, and he was gathered to his fathers. That's a bone box. And that bone box is for your family and for all the generations. So when the Bible says they were gathered to his fathers, the bones of your father would be in there. And when you die, they put your bones in there as well. Next one, please. Then we're up on the uh, Sea of Galilee, and we're casting the net on the other side of the boat, which was really cool. Another one? The field. Armageddon is not a thing that happens. Armageddon is a field. It's a place. And when the end happens, you are going to see Gog, Magog, which potentially could be Russia, China, coming across this field with jets and everything attacking Israel, still yet to happen. And so while we're there, there's always this heat haze. And so we're on, to, like from Mount Carmel, you can see all this. And while we're there, you can hear jets flying by. So quite a feeling to know you are standing on history, but you're also standing on what is to happen. Do I have any more? You go to a, a beach um, and a church, actually, that they erected there, too. That's Jesus putting Peter back into um, his life, really, and just by saying this three times, saying, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And the beach where he, I think that's the next picture. Yeah. The beach where he reinstated Peter, you get to walk on it. So I'll tell you what, if you've ever felt like you have messed up your life, if you have messed up and kind of forsook and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, and then you're in Israel, you get preached at, the Holy Ghost is all over you, and all of a sudden you feel like you've got this opportunity to come back to Jesus. And you can almost sense the Holy Ghost going to you, do you love me more than these? And Wayne House, our, the guy who was with us, was watching us, and he saw that we're wrecked, and he said, I'll tell you what, everyone just go, take a spot on this beach, and just be alone with Holy Spirit. So I, I found a corner myself, just bawled my eyes out. And you, all you sense in that place is, say covenant. And you feel God restoring you again. Do I have anything left? Is that it? Okay. Amen. And then we had other cool stuff. We had, like, we, we got baptized in the River Jordan. We're already baptized, but you're there, so why not do it? I mean, you're in Israel, so do it. And was that the first time you were baptized? So Rachel waited till Israel to get baptized. And so I'm, I'm on the beach, and uh, I'm watching, and Angie's getting baptized as well. They have some big fish in there. And so she's going to get baptized, and I'm watching, and I got the camera, and I'm going, this is wonderful. And four fish line up behind her. Whatever they are, they're like this long. And I'm, I'm looking at them like this, and I'm trying not to have that look on my face as Rachel's looking at me. No, it's good. It's all good. And, yeah, she, she's not a fan of fish. They all lined up behind her in a line, four of them, and their mouths were going like this. <laughs> all of them. It was like this prophetic thing. And I was going, that's so wild. I tell you, God is a covenant with these people. We were with a guy, John, and he would baptize. We called him John the Baptist, the prophet. And he was, he was baptizing people, uh, just us. But there was so much anointing on him that other people would start to come over. Would you baptize us? Would you, ba would you come? Would you baptize us? He would take people and he would baptize them. And that's what we started to do as well. And before, he would say, oh, we're going to baptize Angie. And he would, go, he would go like this. Everyone say Angie. So everyone say Angie. Now do it like this, Angie! Woo, there's a difference. And he said, we're going to call people into the kingdom of God. And he would call their name out. And then he would baptize them. And I mean, he would baptize them. And it's like when he did, there's like not just waves of water, but there's waves of anointing. You're like, whoa, that's incredible. He would take people who were Catholics, who would come Catholic, and we would watch him baptize, what, from Brazil, he would take them. And he didn't just baptize them, he'd like, <laughs> put them down. And then he's looking at us like, what, what? 
And like 20 feet later, these people would pop up like that. But they're on their back. Just this smile and peace and grace on their face. And I'm going, I may not agree with this guy, but man, is Holy Spirit on him. And then he would tell us afterwards, he said, some people, some people have to be thrown. South Americans need to be thrown into the things of the kingdom. And he said, that's why I baptize them the way that I do. They don't need a light baptism. They need more. Amen. Say covenant. Amen. I know I'm giving you a lot, but you need to see this. Uh, can you give me the Deuteronomy scripture? But maybe let's start in verse 6. It's like, why? Why, Lord, do you have Israel? Why? Why do you choose Israel? No, 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 no. Um, Deuteronomy 7, but starting in verse 6. Sorry, that was me. For you, he's talking about Israel. You're a holy people who belong to the Lord your God. Of all the people on earth, the Lord your God has chosen you to be his own special treasure. Keep going. For the Lord didn't set his heart on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other nations. For you were the smallest of all nations. Rather, it's simply that the Lord loves you and was keeping his oath that he'd swore to your ancestors. That's why the Lord rescued you from the strong hand and from slavery from the oppressive hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He didn't choose Israel because Israel's better than you or any other place on this earth. He didn't choose them because they did something so much better. Actually, the Bible says he chose them because they were the least of all people. And he can show himself to be great. Amen? I, I remember when we got saved, Angie and I, and then we would go to different seminars and people would start talking about, you need to pray for Israel. And we were like, why? And then people would get up and they'd passionately talk about Israel and say, you need to do this and you need to do that. And so we did, but we never really fully understood that the Lord has a special plan for Israel, that he loves them desperately and deeply. And when you start to read the book of Romans, and Paul talking about them and saying, man, I, I, would get, I would kill myself, paraphrase, that Israel might be saved and brought back. And there's a day coming when you read the Bible, like we did in Romans as well, when their eyes will be opened, and Israel is going to see Jesus, and they're going to run to him and re be restored. But until that time, their eyes are blinded. And that time actually has turned out to be for our favor. For while their eyes are blinded, there's a number of Gentiles, a full number of people that have to come in. So while this is happening, it is open season on salvation. But there's a time coming, church, when that stops. So in the in-between time, one million people are going to pray for Israel. Praise the Lord. Calls Abraham out of the tent. He says, dude, get out. I want to show you some stuff. Has him look up at the stars. He says, if you, can, if you can count all those, which you can't, that's going to be how many descendants I give you. And gives him a son, which was impossible. Gives him Isaac. And then comes along and says, I'm going to bless you generationally too. And then he decides to bless Jacob. Only Jacob's got kind of a tough life. And things aren't going that great for Jacob, especially when your mom calls you a deceiver and a supplanter and tells you everything you're going to get in life, you're going to have to steal. Anyone ever had a tough life? It feels like you kind of get ripped off. And the cool thing is God goes like this to Jacob. I'm going to give you an opportunity to get that out. And so sends an angel to wrestle with him. Can you put up the Genesis scripture, please? 
And sometimes God will do that. He'll allow you and allow us to scrap. So Jacob has a scrap with God, wrestles with this angel. And the angel says to him, let me go for the day breaks. And Jacob says, I will not let you go until you bless me. Remember this, God's a covenant, covenant God. He's got it with Israel and he's got it with you as well. There is a place sometimes where you need to wrestle and you need to take that blessing that belongs to you because the passivity way just ends up frustrating you, amen? So he says to him, what's your name? And so Jacob says, my name is Jacob. Keep going. And he says to him, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and you have prevailed. And he blessed that boy's socks off. And that was the birth of a nation. God's got a covenant with you as well. Amen. Father, thank you for your Israel. Lord, thank you for your promises which are yes and amen. Lord, thank you for this wild and wonder, wonderful covenant that you, you have with them, but also with us. God, I thank you that uh, us as Gentiles are not a lesser people, not lesser in any way. In fact, you have a plan, a perfect plan, where you decided to bring everything together in one, the Jew together with the Gentile, all in one. So, Father, thank you for what you are doing in this hour. And I pray this, Lord, as well. Would you give us uh, just that passion to pray even for one hour? Lord, what could happen? Don's starting right now. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We have an enemy that's tried to erase God's covenant. Still trying tried to erase God's commandment, tried to erase the rainbow, tried to erase family, tried to erase Israel twice, and how many wars and how much now? And still God prevails, amen? I'm going to speak this over us, and then after that, I'm just going to pray. This is Genesis 12, says this, I will bless those who bless you, I will curse him who curses you. And in you, Israel, all the families of earth shall be blessed. Numbers 24, he's speaking about Israel. He says this, he bows down. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? Blessed is he who blesses you. And cursed is he who curses you. My goodness. What a covenant that he extends to us as well. So, Father, thank you for, uh, Lord, 21 days of pouring back into Israel. What can you do on this earth, Lord? What would happen, Lord, if one million, let alone a hundred million people, start to pray for Israel? Lord, what could possibly happen? We know that there's so much that has happened, Lord. We read it. We call it the covenants. And then we know, Lord, there's so much that still is to happen. And we just saw some of that. Armageddon and things that are yet to happen. And even the wars and the struggles right now that are happening there. Father, I, I, we pray for our brothers and sisters right now. Do you, was that you and I who went into, we went into a store and the guy was telling us how much he loves the Father? Come, you, you have a better memory than I do. Um, it was a map shop. It was full of maps. It was really cool. And the dude that was in there, his name is Moshi, which is like a really cool name because we were like, ooh, these are all like Jewish people. These are so amazing. And so he was a professor at Toronto, and they, they booked the time slot, so he like locks the door. A little strange. But he did, and he sat down. He's like, I understand why you like this Jesus. I've read your New Testament. He's a very likable guy. And we went, mm-hmm. And he said, you know, he said, I understand. So first of all, uh, in 
Israel, well, actually it's in, you're not allowed to go out and evangelize. So in, um, what sector were we in? Yeah. It was not the Muslim. So there's four parts. Oh, I'm going to have to grab my mind. Anyways, we're in this shopkeeper's place, and he says, I know this Jesus. And he's like, when you go there, like, you'll see Orthodox Jews, and they've got the black hats, black coats, and they've got the curly things that they're not supposed to shave there. And they're like this all the time. All the time. And he said, please don't expect them to be friendly. And even the people that we stayed with, it's like, don't expect Israelis to be friendly because they're not really. But he explained to us a little bit about these Orthodox Jews. And he's like, you love Jesus. He's like, you love him and you want to bring him some cake. You want to get a nice piece of cake and you want to take it to him. He's like, well, us Jews, we want a bigger piece of cake. And we want to have this on the cake. And we're so, we're so consumed with giving you the best piece of cake that we forget to be kind. We forget about the people. It's like, so when you see the Orthodox Jews and they're going like this, it's like they don't want to be seen as being idle. So they always want to look. Yeah, it would be irreverent to be idle, to be sitting and laughing and talking when they should be about delivering that cake to the Father. And so that actually helped us because... What has happened, and Moshe had told us, well, he, he said, you know, some of you Christians, you come here and you think, everybody's wrong, you're so religious, you're so far away from God, and you feel the need to tell us about all this. It's like, but let me tell you about this cake. So that actually put it into perspective. And Darren and I, I remember he really responded to our answer, and we went, interesting. And he said, interesting is the right answer. <laughs> And it was like we were in school, and Moshi was just giving us like an education. But he said, that is the open mind that we need to worship Father. Because you love Father. I love Father. And so all of the Jews that you would see, the Orthodox Jews, they're, they just want to be, how can I look like I love God more than everybody else? How can I look like I'm so busy in the love of God? And that's what you see, which is interesting uh, there was some Christians that went in there well-meaning, us, God forgive us, he does, thought, we would thought they would evangelize, and they got thrown out of the old city. Yeah, like for real, like right to the airport, you are gone. So in the, the, is it called the old city? And there's four different sectors, and the reasons there's an Armenian sector, a Muslim sector, a Christian sector, and a fourth one. And the reason that they can all get along is because of this agreement. No one's going to proselytize. You're not going to push your religion or you're not going to push your stuff. Unless, are you talking about the, that incident? Yeah. Muslim. Say, Covenant. What, what Angie's talking about there, like, I cannot describe enough the power of covenant that God has with his people. But the same is true with you. The same, say Gentile, which is who we are. This was always part of God's plan. Yes, he formed Israel first, but in his heart was always, I want Jew and Gentile. I want all family together. Amen? That's why you're not lesser. We have different cultures for sure, but they need us. We need them. The things that we can learn from their uh, depth of knowledge generationally of covenant is amazing, just totally amazing. So we walked through a sector that is uh, Muslim controlled, and as as we did, I tell you, you just feel the presence of God with you and the peace of God that's with you. So we started to go through one sector, and I had one of my daughters with me, and people started coming out of tents. They were not good people. They were not friendly people. They did not have our best interests in mind. They wanted to do something nasty, but the presence of the Lord was so strong on us as we're walking, and one of them came up and grabbed my daughter by the arm like this, and everything's slow-mo and all that's happening. So I looked at him, and right in the eyes, took his hand, lifted it off my daughter, and said, no, you won't, and put it down and kept walking like this. And it's like God pushed everyone and every other thing off to the side and kept us completely, phenomenally safe. But this is normal life there for people. This is what they go through. Do you have a different take? Yeah. Yeah. 
dads always see differently, don't they? And so because you're not allowed to share your faith, so you just be quiet and they instructed us. It's like people try and give you things, just say no thank you, no thank you, no thank you. And so in this Muslim sector, there was a Muslim man who was, he started a conversation with our host, John the Baptist, who's like prophetically wild. And, and he starts, and so John takes it upon himself to speak about Jesus. And we're like, uh-oh. <laughs> So things started to escalate, and he starts saying, no, 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 Allah, Allah, and he just kept going on his stuff, and John kept going, no, 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 no. So then he leaves him alone, and then this man turns towards our Jaden, who is 16 at the time, and he starts talking to her, and then he grabbed her by the arm, and then this one went, absolutely not, get your hands off. So then there was a big uproar, and the escalation, and our John, so it's cobblestone, and there's like one cobblestone of just like three inches up above the other. He went and stood on that one and started yelling out in tongues. Rabbi loud. And all the people start coming out of all the shops and are like, oh gosh, this is the end. <laughs> this is the end. And everyone's running out like they're grabbing stuff. And it's like, oh, this is real. Oh my goodness. And then what happened is the Israeli guard came. And immediately everything just dissipated. People disappeared into the crowd. And it was such a good picture of where the enemy tries to come at us. But the covenant of God came. There you go. Yeah. And, the, and the, the Israelis, they had no idea what was going on. They didn't hear nothing. There was just two of them walking like this, just walking, talking to each other. And they came and turned the corner, but they're carrying automatic weapons. And they look. They got the look. So the, the people who were trying to accost saw them and, <gasps> and then ran. And I mean, they scatter, they're gone, and they all hid. That's covenant, and you're right, we totally need that. Beautiful. I want you to understand this mystery, dear brothers and sisters, so that you won't feel proud of yourselves. Some of the people of Israel have hard hearts, but this will only last until the full number of Gentiles have come to Christ. And so all Israel will be saved, as the scriptures say. The one who rescues will come from Jerusalem, and he will turn Israel away from ungodliness. And this is my covenant with them, that I will take away their sins. So, Lord, thank you for what you've done for us. And if there's anyone even here this morning, um, boy, I'm not going to do a good job talking about God's covenant. It's just so big and so vast and goes beyond this life. But there's anyone here, you don't know that covenant, and you would like to. This isn't an invitation into Victory Church. It's not an invitation into tongues or anything that we do. This is ancient and eternal. It's his love for you, desire for you, not just in this life, not just past death, but for all eternity. He wants to show you how good he really is and how he's had you in his heart. Let's say this together, please. Say, Father, covenant Father, I believe you love me so much that you sent your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for me. You had me in your heart from eternity. I turn to you today and turn away from my sin that I may call you Father. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Amen. And Father, I'm going to ask this as well. Lord, would you allow us to grasp even a little bit, just Lord, or a lot of bit, whatever you... God, just do it. This wonderful, amazing covenant you have with us, but also grant us a knowledge that Israel isn't just some place off in the distant. They're our brothers. They're part of our family. And your great plan is to bring everything back into one. You call it a mystery, Lord, that you would bring the Jew and the Gentile back together in one. Father, I pray that for all of us that would engage uh, in this 21-day fast, that we would know that we're not just sowing into some sort of event. We're sowing into eternity. We're sowing into what you're doing on this earth. 
Lord, I believe it is possible that we can change the very face of this earth. We've been watching for this last season as the enemy's trying to change everything on this earth. And we can see it, Lord. We can even probably state it. This has changed. This has changed. Could it be, Lord, that one million people could change the face of this earth by cost an hour a day? We believe Israel shall be saved. We also believe there is a full number of Gentiles to come in. And until that number is fulfilled, Lord, we continue to go and talk to people and spread the beautiful love of Jesus. God, I ask for that in our hearts. In Jesus' name, that even our hearts would burn with a passion, knowing that eventually, whenever that day is, there's an end to the number. But until that day, it's still on our hearts to bring even more. So thank you right now in the seats for reminding every person of our friends and our family, even co-workers who still need you. In Jesus' name. Wow. I'm going to do something this morning. Uh, for you, those of you that need to go, no problem. The Lord bless you exceedingly. We'll see you again. We have Tuesday prayer. Um, we're going to be starting life groups again, May 10, home groups. So God bless you as you go and enjoy your day today. It's supposed to be a beautiful day, 17-ish, something like that. But there's, for the rest of you, if you want, there's an opportunity here this morning. I just, I've been speaking about covenant and I, I just really sense the Lord going, would you, would you come and just present yourself? Would you just come and just stand in my presence? It's like entering into, it's like acknowledging that which he's doing. But he just wants to be with you. So for those of you that have to go, the Lord bless you exceedingly. But for those of you that want uh, just to come up, just to come up and just stand up here in the front area. It's like stepping into, I don't know if we're supposed to sing or just stand in his presence, but there just is this coming into acknowledgement of who he is. He just, whether you know it or not, he so desires to be close to you. And some of this coming up here is walking past things that have not turned out the way you think that they should. Everyone has those. But he so loves you, his kids. Yes, he loves Israel. Yes, but he loves you. There's a covenant with you. Can you bring the music up a bit, please? the Old Testament, the sons of God would come and they would present themselves before the Lord. And it wasn't so that God could inspect their armor or anything like that. God is love. He just wants his kids to come and be in his presence. knows if the Lord will speak to your heart while you're up here. Life will happen. Good stuff will happen to you. But you know what? Bad stuff happens on this earth too. That's why Jesus said, hey, be of good cheer. I've overcome it. He didn't promise you that nothing bad will ever happen. But get past that today. The events that did happen or didn't happen. Just receive that love today. There's revelation here.